Hello and welcome back for the next stage of where we'll be continuing the build of my Jubilee model railway 70 by 130 centimeter layout. On the previous episode we spent some time building up the baseboard as you can see and laying the track. I'm Tris and this is Double O'Neill. I've set myself this task with the objective to have it running and exhibiting at the Kettering and District Model Railway Society Club Open Day on the 4th of June as part of the club's Platinum Jubilee celebration. I'm going to be using a number of tools on this episode to get this done and we're going to be putting wires in, so droppers that go from the track to underneath the board. I'm using 16 by 0.2 two wire which is 16 strands of 0.2 of a millimeter wire in here so it's a bit more sturdy than the hookup wire which you'll see quite a lot which is the thinner wire which is seven um, strands of 0.2 wire in there and I'm using this just because well, it's pointless for me thinking use thin wire and then eventually have lots of things running on here and it's struggling to get the power on I'm sure it'll be absolutely fine there is an argument for most layouts is you could put two wires on and go have fun, which you will. You'll have lots of fun. But on this layout, two things are happening. Firstly, areas where I'll be moving the locos will need power in between points, like just where we're looking at here. I'm going to be soldering on with my LRP soldering station. So if you like one of these, I could give you a link if you'd like it. Um, I get this from Schumacher Racing. Oh, it's very good soldering iron you can adjust all the temperatures and this soldering iron will be soldering um, the wires onto the track in between these two points so these two points will need power because I'll be going amongst two sidings from time to time I'm going to be tinning the wires first I always find that's good practice I tin that on and then I like to tin the track as well you can get flux put that on the track and put that on and it saves putting lots of heat onto the sleepers which will melt so they're only plastic so you need to be careful but flux does help this stage um, but if you've got a nice iron and a careful hand you'll be absolutely fine putting this on so I tin both sides and all that requires and after that is a nice heat um, you come in with the iron um, and your piece of wire and you put that on there and that's soldered on you can get the track joiners with a wire hanging out from underneath which would be fine, but I understand with age you can lose connectivity um, through resistance and dirt building up inside there. So that's something that I find it's better to, to hardwire if you can and go from there. At least one part of the points connected properly. If you have problems later on, there's things you can do. So then I do the curves as well because my main reason for this is I'll be isolating with the other points well one of the points this area um, and if another one of the points is shut off I'll have no power so I need to make sure when all the points are in the worst positions I can still power the bits of track that I want to power with locos so that's something I'm doing for most loop layouts you won't need to do this uh, a lot of the time power leads in but it's helpful having a few extra lines coming in the other reason for having a number of extra power points on the track is if you want to run DCC um, DCC um, does benefit well with its smooth running by having a few more connected lines from your same power source and that normally comes in form of what's called a bus line which is a, a matching rail of wire that goes underneath and every let's call it two foot you have a set of wires that go up connect to it and make sure that that power to the track is working um, so yeah, there's ways of making things more efficient, but if you're new to the hobby, you'll be absolutely fine running your layout with just two wires connected to it to begin with. If you do find there's areas that it goes slow, sometimes if you do have some extra power inputs to that area, it can make it go better. Or it could be that you've got some poor track joiners that are not allowing the power to transfer, so then the voltage dips. So that's something that you can do to fix that. This is another area that isolates from the rest of the railway when both of these are switched. So I could go from what will be the engine shed going to the goods yard. So I wanted to have some power here as well. So you could be thinking, oh, you're going overkill on connections. But actually, there'll be areas that end up not having any power. 
um, unless I keep one of these points open. So I don't want to do that. Turning the board upside down, we get to have the fun now with the wiring. I end up putting a number of holes in the supporting beams, so then we can transfer the wires through. You'll see I'm using a sanding block just to get rid of any spiky bits of wood that might end up going in your fingers as well as to neaten this up. And after that, you get the faithful hoover out or vacuum cleaner, non-brand Pacific, um, and that allows us to keep things nice and tidy as we're going. I've added some extra loop wires or connecting wires to some of the areas that I can run whilst the points are closed, but we'll focus on the these for now. We're not going to wire up the DCC um, extra loop wires or drop drop down wires. And all I do is I twist the wires together to begin with, and I'll be putting some heat shrink on afterwards. But I twist them together. I first of all twist the wires themselves. Um, on their own, get all the strands to twist together and then I put that together and it kind of adds some strength to the connection when you do it. After that, I get the heat gun out and I come over and I heat shrink them. So using heat shrink, my heat shrink doesn't shrink down too much. It's like a two to one heat shrink. But if you get some four millimeter stuff that's kind of a, I don't know, six to one, that shrink down really tiny. Um, I'm not sure exactly which ones are out there. But I could do have some that shrinks down a bit more. That loops across here. Um, or, or travels across here and it's going to connect up with two more wires as you can see just here um, and I'm going to then have three wires twisted together um, and then put some heat shrink over nice and simple I'm not going to use terminal blocks um, sometimes it's hard to get everything in there and sometimes it doesn't always work but it'd be absolutely fine for you if that's what you're using um, uh, soldered connections are generally I find the strongest and the best and it will stay there and if I want to change anything I can recut wires I've left enough room in your wiring so if you're ever doing the wiring don't make everything tight give it a little bit of bagginess or um, laxness <laughs> so you're able to then allow the the wire to then go to a new position if then cuts um, so I always try and have a little bit of you know room for adjustment for later on I'm going to connect up the wires using this kind of sprung um, connector. That will be going on the outside, but I thought I'd make a mark on the board. We drill some holes and we can put the wires through and solder it on. Um, the benefit of this for me is if I want to change controllers. So I can have a controller with some wires, plug it into this one. So I can use either DCC, I can be on DC, it doesn't really matter then. I sold it on through the board, works out alright for this, you can see it, I get enough of it on there and that's now in place and that's not going anywhere, even the connector itself, not the connector, the, uh, yeah, the connector. On to point motor wiring, it's kind of something that might be scary for some of you that haven't done it, but it's quite simple, the gauge master points, which is GMC PM10, have the connector um, with screw terminals on it, so it's pre-wired for you to a certain point. Then you put your three wires in. So you have a common, which is the black, which connects to the well, one side of what the um, capacitor discharge unit is going to be giving you. And then the yellow and green, well, the yellow is going to go to red, and green is going to go to the green on this gauge master wire. Should have used red all the way through, but fine. Um, you then do that for both points. And the, the yellow and green are going to go to each side of the switch the center of the switch which is obviously three connections on it center of it's going to have the power from the other side of the capacitor discharge unit by gauge master i'll put a part number up on the screen so it's quite simple that discharge unit you have two inputs from the power supply um, and then you have two outputs that go out so you have a common on the output um, and that connects to the black wires and then the the positive side of it or the other side of it that goes to the center of the point motor switches which you'll be what well, we will be wiring up very shortly um, so I mount this capacitor discharge unit it's quite small it's quite nice to work on um, I make some little holes and use some self tapping screws and put it in don't always like leaning on wood and creating my own threads and holes and mess around too much sometimes if you've got a drill and a small hole maker a small drill then you'll be absolutely fine with that so you can see we've got our black wire now that we're working on and I pop that into 
what will be the common side for what goes to the point meters and you can have 10 point meters and they can share that single black wire then I'm using an old Hornby controller which has got a 16 volt supply for accessories so why not use this I'm going to use the adjustable um, element which is for the track speed the red bomb that will be for my lighting as well so I'll make use of this so we connect up my green and yellow wires I had these already on from last time I did some of this kind of work and they go and connect up to the um, capacitor charge unit itself I didn't I wasn't sure exactly which one was positive and negative on the board but it showed one that was common so I wired up that way and on the wiring diagram it does tell you which way to do it um, I don't know if you can wire it up the other way um, but fine then I put a wire onto what will be the positive of the output from this and that will be going to the points um, which will be going to the switches which I'm drilling some holes for now um, to hold the unit well the wires to go through for that the unit will be above on so my poor English there so I drill my holes there you can see there kind of had a bit out of view but I thought you can still see it and I poke my wires through and after that we're going to organize them what we do is we flip it over so we can work on it a bit easier just like before stripping wires I'm just using some old wire strippers here there's lots of fancy ones out there sometimes I use my fancy ones when I can find them I currently mislaid them I tin all my switch wires you can use um, the connectors that you use for cars you know the push fit ones the crimp connectors but I'm on one side of the connector obviously you can't see on the switch actually what I'm doing here um, I put the green on and the other side of the switch I put the red on and in the middle I put my yellow wire on which is coming from the capacitor discharge unit the red and green are going to the two sides of the point motor that aren't black they aren't common so when I flick this these are passing switches you don't use a switch that holds the power on all the time otherwise you just burn out the coils that are within the switch um, well the point motor so with that wired up we test it and it works it works pretty well these are noisy I would argue that they uh, <laughs> could wake up the neighbours if it was next to their door, you know, next to the wall, something like that. But when I'm in a noisy show, I'm sure it'll be fine. There are other options available to us. With them working, I just want to make sure now the track works as well as the point motors work. So I'm just going to do a loop just to make sure what I've got on here is working. And we need to test all of the points to make sure when we go to them, we've got power there. Okay. it makes a lot of sense to me so I flick the points we run it down into the first of the sidings that I'll keep little locos in so I have a loco with some coaches or wagons or whatever I like really and then this is my one to help me um, I can either park something in here or if I've got a long train um, that awkwardly can't get into that first siding I can go into there first and shuffle back Now not all of these are the same length, uh, some of them I think this last one is a little bit shorter um, but it will do the job. Um, for me this is a bit of fun and I'm not taking it super serious in one way for achieving the best ever layout that's ever been done for going to a show, <laughs> which clearly it's not. Um, but I'm doing some learning, I'm having some fun and I'm staying out of a warm loft uh, where I normally go, this is a nice challenge. We go into the goods yard area, which is nice to work on. And yep, yeah, that seems to work quite nicely. And that's going to be having things dropped off in. And then the loco will be going off. So we'll have some fun with that in a bit. I practice with some wagons. But it goes over the points fine. You still have power when they're both switched. So you know they're they're sealed off. Uh, which is great. Um so everything power that needs to be powered. So yeah happy this is a Hornby packet it's an 040 loco actually a really nice little runner um, I need to clean its wheels it's a bit overdue a wheel clean um, but it's been nice it's quite heavy for its size which is great and I've got a few 040s that we're going to have running around this layout now this is a sound module by gauge master it's made by train tech i understand for gauge master and it's these um scenic sounds 
uh, basically. Um, and it'll be making these lovely barks and uh, noises from sheep, cows, tractors. I think it's brilliant, if I'm honest with you. So let's have a listen. It's got a volume control on it, and it also has a push button. That's not bad. So let's get out some options of things that we could try and see if they run. I've got quite a long coach here, which is an auto coach. Um, I just thought I'd just see if that goes round. And then I've got two terriers I thought I'd try that I haven't tried yet on the layout. The Peckett struggles with this coach. Um, I think the wheels on the coach aren't very good because it should be able to get around because it's, a, you know, it's double bogeyed. So we'll get that off. It's kind of got a bit hooked here on the logo put that aside but maybe I'll try something later on but I didn't think I'd be doing that I'll be sticking to these small four wheel coaches then I've got the Hornby no this is this is by Dapol or Dapol um, Terrier which is a lovely looking great western loco and it seems to struggle with the curves when you go around them I thought maybe because it's got the same wheelbase as my 1366 or similar one it would get round but the loco doesn't have good electrical movement, so it just derails every time it goes around them. So I thought, fine. Um, but I know with this loco, uh, though it doesn't like to hold on to its coaches very often, it drops them off here <laughs> and goes, I didn't have it coupled on properly. Has no trouble going on. This is a Hornby one. Um, so I was very impressed, actually. So you, for the tight radiuses, the Hornby uh, loco seems to have a uh, fantastic ability to get around tight curves. Um, so I was very happy with that, so I, <laughs> I need to buy another one, maybe. I know they've got a Great Western Railway one coming out, so I might pick one of them up, and my other terrier can live up in the loft on the big radius layout. But it seems quite happy going round. Um, it did come off here a little bit, so I checked it a couple of times, and then actually tried it the other way around the layout, and it seems to prefer going one way more than the other. Um, but I'm quite happy with it. So... Yeah, can't really complain on that one. Um, yeah, the coaches seem fine. I was worried about Buffalock, you know, when they go around the corner, um, or, you know, on the curves. Um, you know, they could be hooking on each other, but it seems absolutely fine when it does it. So I'm just going to go slowly here, have a watch, and it's coming off fine. This is where the station will be, just here. And then we keep going around and swing around the, the tight radius here. No popping off absolutely fine and so I'm watching it carefully with it turned down nice and slow so yeah can't complain with that one I think I'll be picking up another loco from Tony's trains I've seen one that he has that I would like I also wanted to run um, my Thomas loco around here and actually when I tried to run him that completely failed he, he came off straight away I thought that I'd have loads of lateral movement on the wheels but that didn't turn out my favour so I was like, fine. Um, so I'm going to pick up a Percy, I think, for when there's kids at the show and run that round and make them happy. Um, yeah, running the Peckett round now with some goods vehicles. Um, I thought that if I use um, the Peckett with the vans and everything, see if the buffer lock happens because they're short wheelbase. I think everything seems absolutely fine. So practicing what I'd have at the show, trying not to do the points myself, but using the controls. I bring it in and you can then leave a nice little van there and off you go I need to get make well I did make myself a decoupler um, you know that you can use by hand I can't find it so I need to print off another one because I 3d printed it before and yeah so this is what I'll be doing I'll be leaving things for the good shed it will be off it will go off on its next journey I've got one of my favorite wagons it's a, a Reading wagon and uh, that's where I'm gonna come from so yeah it's nice to have things like that. Then there's the 1366 strutting his stuff, doing what he's good at. So it's something that I'm 
I'm happy with anyway. But uh, I've got two of these that are from Helian, and even though they aren't the best runners, they go around tight radiuses really well. So that's something that I'm really pleased about. And so yeah, kind of making sure things connected up. It's gonna be something I'll have to practice on the day, but I'll have all day to practice. It's one day. It's ten till four at Thought Mouse or Village Hall. If you do enjoy model railways and you fancy a trip come and see it big thank you to my channel patrons you've all been brilliant as well as my channel members thank you for your support this allows the channel to grow and become a bit more and it gives me that extra motivation to do it if not become a subscriber um, or at least like and leave a comment um, that's all great support um, let me know what you like anything you think that I might need to know about it's always nice to learn new things again thank you so much for watching I hope you enjoyed yourself and picked up a few tips and tricks and I'll see you next time bye bye